Hello again. Today I'm repairing a guitar effects pedal. It's quite a big one. This is a mains powered unit. It's fairly heavy, feels very substantial. It's a TC Electronics Nova system. It's dead. We'll see if that's a quick fix or not. So we'll just find out exactly how dead this thing is. Put some power in and see what it does. And watch the current very closely. Well, <laughs> no current at all. If it's pulling no current, it's probably blowing a fuse somewhere. I mean, there's no switches or power buttons or anything I see on this, so I think it should just work straight away. Because of the weight of this, it could have a transformer in it, or it could be a switch mode power supply. I don't know till I open it up. Just get all the screws out of the top. I think the top comes off, <laughs> rather than the bottom comes off. Not too many screws on here. Let's have a look. Oh! Oh! Well, it looks fairly sophisticated to me. Quite a lot of fancy electronics in there. This is where all the cleverness is clearly happening. But the power supply is, looks to be, a little switch mode board tucked under there. Well, I think this top board needs to come out, so I'm just going to have a look if there's any, there's another screw down there. That can come out. That's under these little sprocket things. <laughs> this one's coming apart really nicely. Let's see what we can do here now. Just need to make some cables come out and just nicely on sockets. This is good. This feels loose now. I don't think there's much hold in it to be honest. A bit of plastic Yeah. Come on, out you come. And now we get our first glimpse at the power supply. Definitely a switch mode. Yeah, we'll fetch it out so you can have a better look at it. Oh, I see straight away <laughs> the fuse has gone. Oh, it's even turned black. That's had a proper blow, that is. Something's gone short on here. It'll be on the primary side. Just looking. Very simple on the back, no components. Yeah, an interesting point. I don't see any chips on this for controlling it. So I think this is one of these sort of self resonating ones. Which could be quite simple. Oh well, let's find out why the fuse blew. Let's check these diodes down here, it's the, the bridge rectifier. Just looking for shorts. Ah, oh, these are all good. Well, those ones so far. Yeah, fine, no shorts there. This is where the rectifier DC sits. So probably be, that's 400 volt rated that. So, you know, if there's any shorts that might show up around here if it's blowing the fuse. Oh, okay. <laughs> About 335 ohms across there, that's never right. Well, it doesn't look bulged or anything, or too distressed, so I'd be surprised if that capacitor is actually shorted to 300 odd ohms. More likely to be something else. I'm very suspicious of the main switching transistor. Let's check that out. So this would be a MOSFET most likely, so we've got a gate drain and a source there. So we'll go drain to source. If there's a short, it's normally there. Oh, there we have 300. And 65 ohms gate to drain, yeah, 300 ohms. Oh, interesting. Something not right there. What about here? Oh, 15 ohms. That's definitely trouble. <laughs> I've just seen this is in the way of the screw. I'm to see if I can bend it in. Hopefully, with enough force. Yes, it's, it's getting it. What a horrible design. Let's desolder this thing then. Start this this leg here. Yeah, annoyingly, this board keeps wanting to flip right over with all the wires on it. Is it out? Can we get it? It's wiggling. <laughs> it's like a loose tooth. There we go. So here we have a suspect transistor. What is it for those? 
people wanted to know. It's a 2SK2625. It will be a MOSFET in an all plastic package. Not that that really matters. See if we got the short circuits done here. The 15 ohms. Oh yeah, 345 ohms there. That's not right. 15 ohms there, yeah. All the weird readings <laughs> from this. Just check that the <laughs> shorts disappeared from the board as well. Yeah, I'm just measuring the capacitor there, so it's getting uh, 1 meg ohms. Yeah, here. Yeah. Used to be 15. Now we've got 36k, which is typical of a, some sort of silicon across it. 38k, that way. Yeah. It's not 300 ohms anyway. Let's see if we can find one of these. The problem with repairing a lot of electronics now is that parts become obsolete or you just can't find them or get hold of them. This little transistor, <laughs> they look, all look the same, I know, but you'd have to check the characteristics out, make sure you're putting something in that's right. I already had a quick look to see if I could just buy the exact same thing, which is always the safest thing. Couldn't find anything, so I'm going to have to go shopping. This is like top trumps for geeks. I've got the data sheet here for this 2SK2625. I can check the characteristics out there because it's no good checking this one's characteristics because it's buggered. Anyway, I've had a look. It's fairly standard 600 volts rated at 4 amps. They advertise it as having a you know low on resistance and a low QG. That's a gate charge, which is interesting to know for switching applications. What I found available, which that's the key word these days, finding something you can actually order in from stock. Found this Infineon item here, an IPA 90R1, blah blah blah. Uh, this one, 900 volt rated, much better. Your on resistance 1.2 ohms, which is not ideal, but to be fair, it's not terrible. I don't think this application is going to be very uh, demanding, really. The gate charge on this is 28 nano coulombs. Uh, which is pretty low. Let's check what it is on here. Yeah, 20 on this one. It's pretty similar. So I'm going to fit this part and see how it gets on. To <laughs> get the parts out of the bag, it's always a challenge. Oh, <laughs> especially the holes at the other side. <laughs> there we go. One brand new MOSFET. So I've got to bend the legs on this so it fits in this three hole pattern like that. So just the middle leg will have to come forwards. Just use the pliers on it. Just kink it out like that and yeah a bit of judgment really I'm gonna say about here yeah something like that just gonna put a little bit of heat sink paste on there not much because it's bloody messy stuff yeah this will end up everywhere ah oh, now I've got to get it <laughs> into position I can see straight down there because so of the holes I'm aiming for. Oh, bugger, I've just dropped them. Ah. Said it gets everywhere. Ah, yuck. Oh, where's that rag? Oh. See if we can't get this in. About the only good thing about heatsink paste is it sort of holds the transistor in place, <laughs> it sticks it to the heatsink. Trying to line the, the hole up <laughs> for the screw. If you get the screw to go in, that would be lovely. Yeah, you need to have a thinner screwdriver. <laughs> That's a funny angle. There we go. I right, can tighten that up with a bigger one now. Not too tight though. There we are. It's in from the top. <laughs> to solder it now. Let's not forget to change the fuse. Just leave that out of there. <laughs> bit, of a, bit of a fiddle, nice fresh new one. Oh, <laughs> bloody hell. It's not designed for servicing, is it? This looks better. This is a bit of a once over. I don't see any more trouble really. I was going to check for shorts on the output side, I doubt there will be any. 
So we've got a minus 15 volt reg, plus 15 volt regulator, and a 5 volt regulator for the logic. Let's check the output pins, just check there's no no shorts or anything that may have caused the primary side to go pop. No. <laughs> Easy to check them from the bottom. <laughs> oh. I've got a short. Yeah, we've found some more trouble here. <laughs> so the 5 volt regulator between the input and ground, I'm getting dead short 0 ohms. And then what we've got here, we've got this capacitor and this diode in circuit. That, ah, something shorted, something. So, of course the capacitor's measuring the same, it's the same place. So we've got this diode here before it goes to the um, winding of the transformer. So is this short? Yes it is. Very, very short. Oh, <laughs> wow. Well, a bit more broken than I thought. Uh, hopefully it's just the diode and not the regulator, but uh, they're both cheap parts. Let's just pull them out one by one to see where the short is. That's the diode out. <laughs> yeah, this little pesky thing, SB240, that's a shot key barrier diode. Let's just check if it is actually shorted. Oh, oh definitely. Yeah. <laughs> See if we've got one. Yeah, I haven't got the same diode, which was a 40 volt 2 amp diode, but I've got these HGR202Gs. These are also 2 amp shock key barrier diodes. These are good for 100 volts, so <laughs> upgrade. So in here we can see where it went. You can see the little line saying which direction it goes. So try and line the <laughs> line the legs up with the little holes. There we are. Well, I'm going to hedge my bets now that <laughs> that's all that was up with this. I've had a poke around with the meter. I can't find any other shorts and I think the nature of the failure is all internal on the power supply. I'm pretty sure it didn't go external. So I'm going to put it back in and try it. So down there, that's the end of that one. The board back in. <laughs> it seems reluctant to go in. Ah, you need longer cables. On there. And one here. Plug these cables in because it gives us a quick test to see if it powers up <laughs> or goes bang. <laughs> well, I guess this is all good. And what all these buttons do? <laughs> Let's face it. I don't know what this is for. Oh. <laughs> I'm just pressing things. Wow. Oh! <laughs> Perhaps I should stop messing. And here's a guilty line. We've got the 1 amp fuse, we've got the switching MOSFET, and a 2 amp shock key barrier diode. That's it. Looks a bit grubby, I'm going to give it a bit of a clean. All part of the service.
Well, I'm calling this Rise from the Dead <laughs> result. <laughs> but it looks like it's got plenty of life in it, flashing lights and lots of stuff going on. Call that a success. Catch you next time.